Hi, welcome to Across the Desk. This week, we have Shantae Gilmore, who's running for House District 100 for the State House seat, and she's my guest this week on Across the Desk. Hey everybody, Kit Fairchild with Across the Desk. Well, I have something special for Across the Desk viewers. If you go to barnesandnoble.com, bn.com, and you type in 10 Lessons of Conservative Cowardice, go to the book page, the book I wrote, click buy, go to the shopping cart, and down in the activation code, put BNP for Barnes & Noble Promotion, ATD across the desk, 25 for 25%, and you'll get 25% off the list price of the book. Right now, for the next year, if you're an across the desk viewer, go to Barnes & Noble, Go to 10 Lessons of Conservative Cowardice, buy the book, in the shopping cart, put BNP ATD 25 and get 25% off the book. Hi Shantae. First, thank you for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. I know how busy you are, all the candidates right now, out there campaigning, meeting people, going to events. Thank you so much for taking the time to appear on this show. So you can tell my viewers more about you. So so tell me a little bit more about you. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for having me on. I greatly appreciate it. And I want to say hello to House District 100 and the rest of Oklahoma. Like he said, my name is Shantae Gilmore and I'm the Democratic nominee for House District 100. Um, a little bit about me. Um, I first moved to Oklahoma City back in 1996. I went to Putnam City High School. Uh, I then went on to Oklahoma State University where I um, received my athletic training degree, and then I went to Oklahoma City Community College where I received my associate degree in physical therapy, and then I went on to Mid-America Christian University where I received my Master's of Business Administration Healthcare Management. Um, after graduation, after all that, um, and even during that time, I was very involved in the community. I am attached to various um, civic organizations locally and statewide and on a national level. So I was able to really impact the community um, by training young progressives, by um, just uh, volunteering with di um, different things or whatnot. And so through that whole experience, especially since I'm a healthcare worker and I really cared about healthcare, um, I really started getting involved in these organizations holding leadership, organi leadership positions and getting involved, um, which eventually I you know, decided to, to run for office because of all my volunteerism that I did and making sure Oklahoma was um, doing good. So, it, Are you from Oklahoma? Are you born here, raised here, or anything so like that? So my dad is military, so um, my mother is from Lawton, Oklahoma. So okay. that's where my roots are. But we always came back to Oklahoma mm -hmm. when I was growing up as a child and things like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, went to school here and everything went school, else too. Went to high so. school and college here. So. Um, and a lifetime of activation. It's an yeah. adult lifetime of it anyway. Yes, yeah, so like, my adult years have definitely been. So, it, so that's really had an impact on you and an impact to run. How has your active, uh, being an activist, mm -hmm. uh, how has that spurred you to want to run? And, and was this something you just thought of this time or is this something you thought of before? Is this a planned deal? What a, it was not planned. <laughs> <laughs> it was not planned. Uh, so I really care about people. Um, want to make sure that people are taken care of, leaving a, a, a impactful legacy that for future generations in Oklahoma. Um, my grandmother was actually she ran for office in Lawton, Oklahoma, and okay. my cousin actually holds her seat as oh, a wow. city council person um, in oh, Lawton, wow. Oklahoma. So it's kind of always I remember as a little kid okay. knocking yeah. doors for my grandmother, but I always thought you know that was her her deal. My mm -hmm. deal was just being in organizations. Um, being a networker, making change in Oklahoma City and Oklahoma, um, that was my thing. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why I decided to run. Um, yeah, why did you decide to run? Wanted, okay, so the reason why I decided to run, because of everything that I was involved in, and I was just running across Oklahoma City, mm -hmm. going to meetings, organizing oh, yeah. things or whatnot, um, trying to make change in Oklahoma, and I really had to take a long look at okay, do I continue running across Oklahoma City trying to make change on the outside, or do I go to the Capitol and make change on the inside? Because policy shapes every aspect of yeah. our lives. And once I realize that, that policy does shape from the water we drink to the air we breathe mm -hmm. to how we drive on the road, um, to just 
the different legislation that's out there, I have to have a seat at the table. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be a sensible person yeah. at the table, right? Um, and so in that moment, I was like, okay, I need to go ahead and run. Yeah, and, so. and, and exactly, so when you get to the state house, mm -hmm. what are kind of uh, some of your priorities that you want to take on? Do you, do you have anything in mind, what you're thinking about? Yes, I do. So I am very passionate, first and foremost, about health care. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, women's health care, um, veterans' health care, making sure that they have the um, health care that they need fast, because you know, most of the time veterans have to wait a little bit mm -hmm. to get their health care needs. Um, definitely making sure yeah. that they, the, the pro whatever processes is going on to make it slower or whatnot, make sure that they get the health care they need and mental health. I mean, the yeah. highest rate of uh, suicide rate um, is amongst veterans, homelessness. Like, we need to really, combat yeah. all those different things. Um, my dad's a veteran, so that's why I'm very passionate about that. And just, like I said, I'm a health care worker. So well, just Oklahoma, period, mm -hmm. is bottom Oklahoma. of the list for health care and mental health services especially. So, right. yeah, it's something, it's right. something definitely needs to be looked into. Exactly. Honestly. So definitely health care is on the top. Um, education. Education is a big one, I bet. Yeah. I am a product of public school. Mm -hmm. I went to Putnam City High School, the original. Um, and so as I went and talked to educators and really heard what makes them stay in education, mm -hmm. um, what's wrong with education, yeah. you know, um, the biggest thing that they said, you know, that I heard from the conversations that I've had with teachers is that they definitely want public funds to stay in public schools. It should not be going to private schools. Um, these are the experts. Yeah. So I'm going to listen to the experts. I imagine there's probably a moral, morale problem too is probably I mean they seem to be getting attacked left and right mm -hmm. right now to be a teacher mm -hmm. even to the point that one senator say his name was to make a law to ten thousand dollar fine against teachers who do certain stuff so it's like that just scares people away mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. that's a plan it really is if, if you look at Oklahoma GOP's platform on education the plan is to privatize it and get rid of public schools make it look as horrible and be as horrible as possible so you don't want to send your kids there. That's yeah, actually right. the plan and they're actually putting it into place. And the thing is, it's like I always think about if we invest in our kids now, yeah. 20 years from now we're going to, Oklahoma's going to benefit mm -hmm. from that. We're losing our best teachers yeah. to neighboring states because they're getting paid more. Yeah, right? that's one thing. Um, and they're not, and they're not um, getting the things that they need in the classroom. Mm -hmm. I mean, why are we sending yeah. private funds public funds exactly. to private schools when teachers are paying things out of their pocket, you know? So. Yeah, I have a theory on that, but we just really don't have enough time to go into all that. I'd rather talk about you and your okay. campaign and everything else. And so you have this campaign going on mm -hmm. and you've been hitting doors and talking to organizations. How long have you been doing that now? How long has your campaign been going on actually? I launched my campaign April 14th. All right. And so I've been hitting the ground right. running ever since. And you, I've been keeping up with you. I've been seeing your Facebook page and everything. You've been going to different organizations, mm -hmm. hitting different places and people, and, and doing a lot of talking to me. Like you're really meeting a lot of Oklahomans out there. Yes. What are the people telling you? What are they telling you? So it's very interesting uh, when I go out and I meet different different people um, in the places I go. Um, they really care about that they're being heard, that their voice is being at heard at the table. Um, we can all have different ideas and different positions on different things, but not one certain group should have overpower another certain group. Like everybody should come yeah. to the table and just come together. And that's what I really It's really not like that, especially here, especially with the latest maps. Mm -hmm. I said cherry mandarin maps like you wouldn't believe. Right. So yeah, there, we just don't really have a semblance of what a republic should look like here. It's right. more of a plutocracy. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you right. know, yeah, when, when Harold Hamm and Larry Nichols and Clay Benton Bennett are in charge of everything and every aspect of politicians' lives, right. you're living in a plutocracy. It's mm -hmm. no longer a republic. Right. And that's kind of what we got. And then with the majorly gerrymandered maps. Right. Whew, yeah. Right. You've got mm -hmm. pretty much one party that controls everything. Pretty much controls all of it. But if we can get people out to vote, yep. you got to get out to you vote, can. we can make that change. Yeah, I was seeing some statistics where really if we can get about 63% of the Democrats that are registered to vote, right? just registered, not new registries, just get the ones that are registered, 63% of them were winning races. Right. 
So that's yeah, you look at House District 100. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. such a diverse yeah. district. And we can get them out. We can get the independents oh, yeah. out. Even some of the Republicans out. I was looking at the uh, rolls, too, for House District 100. There's really only about 800 more Republicans than there are Democrats in this district. Right. So it's doable. Very right. doable. It is very they, doable. Get out there knocking doors in District 100. And I'll be doing a tour of the district pretty soon, so look out on my Facebook page, um, the website, and things like that, so you'll see me and Bethany. And yes, you Warrior. have a website. What is the website? What, what is it? What, what's the, what, how do people go find it if you want to type it in? What's the name of it? All right. It's very simple. My last name is Gilmore, like Happy Gilmore or Gilmore Girls. So it's Gilmore for the F-O-R, for OK.com. Gilmore for OK.com. Gilmore for OK.com. Correct. That's where you need to go. And it'll have all the information about you, policy positions, maybe where they can catch you. Is there any kind of like information page where they can catch yes. you events or anything? Yes, and definitely on my social media pages. And absolutely a place to donate to your campaign. Please course. donate to the campaign. <laughs> we got to get it the takes, arts on It takes out. money to run a campaign. It does. It does. It, you know, does. it does take money to run a campaign. Mm -hmm. You can't do it on nothing. It, do, it really does. It yes. really does. That is correct. So, yeah, I just look forward to beating the incumbent November 8th um, and so definitely check out the website um, you'll see my policy positions you'll see what about me some pictures of my, me and my family are up there so one thing before we end we yeah. wanted to talk about one thing and that was the Roe vs. Wade decision okay. and what we can do statewide wise mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and your ideas about that okay. about because we talked about women's health care a little bit, you mm -hmm. talked about being for that and what you wanted to do, mm -hmm. but talk about that specifically a little bit. Okay. So as a health care worker, um, and I provide medical treatments, um, when Roe Ro vs. Wade was overturned, I was treating a patient actually and I saw it on the TV and I was like, wow. Now as a woman, of course I felt that, right? Mm -hmm. um, but as a health care worker, provider, um, this was the first time in my lifetime that I've seen a constitutional right taken away yeah. from a certain population of people. Um, so yes, that was devastating, um, but the one thing that I think the Supreme Court didn't count on and that now it's, has been turned back to the people, and like I said earlier, you have to get out and vote for the candidates yeah, that are for Roe versus Wade, and personally for me, I support the right, to, the right for the woman to choose. Um, if she wants an abortion or not, that should not be between the government and a woman. It should be between her, um, herself, and then if she wants to discuss it with other people outside that and her clinician. Um, you, you always like to hear them talk about big government a lot, mm -hmm. and this would be definitely a case where I could say, you know, this looks like big government conservatism. Especially when you have <laughs> James Langford getting out there saying, you know, I don't think I really want women crossing state lines if they're pregnant. It's kind of like, okay, that, that's big government. Right. That's definitely right. you know, the thing and, that they rail against. Right, so, and so like I said earlier, yeah. when it comes to policy, policy mm -hmm. shapes everything, so now you return it back to the states. So it's now up to the voters to vote for the candidates that are going to vote in, um, for um, abortion rights in Oklahoma. You see what Kansas did. Yeah. Kansas, oh, yeah. came, Kansas came out and said, uh, no, this is what oh, we're yeah. doing. So. They want to do a recount. They can't believe it. <laughs> I know. So if you Kansas can else? do it yeah. to the north of us, yeah. we can do it here in Oklahoma. So. Oh, yeah. Well, Shante, thank you so much for appearing on my show. All the time I have for now. Yes, thank but you. But thank you so much. Very informative. Got to meet you. My viewers get to meet you. we are definitely voting for you this year because, you know, I'm in House District 100. I know. So... I'll be voting for you. You got my vote. Thank That's you so much. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much for being on the show. And guys, we'll see you next week.